Welcome back everybody. I previously landed an A-10 Thunderbolt II, more commonly known as a Warthog, on an aircraft carrier in Digital Combat Simulator World. At that time I mentioned that we'd figure out taking back off later. Well that day has come. It's time to put the A-10 through its carrier testing and determine if an A-10 Walrus variant is feasible with just a few modifications to the airframe. If you enjoy this, please be sure to like and subscribe. Consider supporting the channel over on Patreon, it really helps. Also, consider joining the Discord if you're into it. You can sometimes find me just hanging out in the voice chat, and I'm on there at least two to three times a week, just to chat. All right, here we go. Starting off with a pretty standard approach, except this time we've actually got some armament. We'll look at that in a second. When I landed this on the carrier the first time, there were no missiles or bombs or anything on the plane. Obviously, since we don't have an arrestor hook here, we're gonna land the full length of the carrier. Just try to creep right over the edge, so we're going nice and slow. Here we go. And... Oh, yeah. Brakes, 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 brakes. This does not have a thrust reverser that I'm aware of, anyway. Somebody let me know if I'm wrong. I'm gonna have to turn it around. Stop. Excellent. That's what we had going on. Fully deployed air brakes, full flaps. And we've got four Maverick missiles. A pod on one side and two sidewinders on the other. If you've ever worked around A-10s or live near one of the bases where they operate, you'll know that this is actually a fairly standard loadout. Okay, now we gotta get back to the edge of the carrier. Luckily here we have independent brakes per side. So I'm applying the full left wheel brake so that left wheel shouldn't turn. Or at least not nearly as much. We're having to get some real power here to make this turn, but... Oh, there we go. Come on. And there we go. Now we just make our way back to the end of the carrier. And figure out what's going on. Important point here in Digital Combat Simulator World, you'll notice when we landed that we damaged the carrier just a little bit. Look at how much room this thing has. By golly. Wouldn't even be a challenge to put one of these on carriers. I really do appreciate the detail of Digital Combat Simulator World. It's not a brand new game by any means, but some of the stuff you can do in it is really incredible. Okay, now we gotta get turned around. We're obviously gonna take off into the wind using the carrier's... ...velocity to help get airflow over our wings. So we'll stick way to the left over here. That ought to do it. And right wheel brake. Rudder. Whoop. Applied both brakes there for a second. My fault. Okay, we've got enough space over there. Ah, that was alt. My, my fault. I thought it was control. Alright. Alt for the right wheel brake. Here we go. Again, I'd have spotters here, so I don't feel too bad about using third person view. I bet the view from the cockpit's gonna be pretty hairy here in just a second anyway. And keep cranking it around the corner here. Some heck. Come on. Come on. I gotta get it rolling just a little bit and then stomp on the brake. There we go. There it is. Well, at least at this point, we've made the turn for all intents and purposes. Yeah, totally. Totally normal view from an A-10 right there. It's exactly what the, the training teaches you. Just gotta keep 
keep getting it around this corner here. But I want to stay as near to the back as we can so we have good run-up space to gain speed before we exit the carrier. Okay, that'll work. Beautiful. Actually, I actually do have quite a bit of space here. Even with this relatively light load, I suspect we'll do okay. There's no afterburners on this or anything like that. But we're not super heavy at this point anyway. All right. Let's go ahead and drop some flaps. There we go. We're gonna need a little bit of lift, additional lift going here. 10 degrees should do it. Throttles up. Holding the brakes right now. Let the engines get going. There we go. Seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred, and oh, we're sinking. And we got it. We got it. Gear up. No problem. Look at that. Now, with any good carrier test, one of the primary tests is going to be repeatability. Can we do it again? Could a naval aviator do it again, I suppose, is the real question. I got a good flight instructor you guys could hire. He's a German Shepherd. Some say he once built an aircraft carrier out of recalled Ford Pintos. And that carrier was one of the safest ever built. Alright. Try this again. Is it repeatable? Flaps down. Cut some power. Gear down. Pretty high at the moment. All right, air brake out. Bleeding speed. Flaps down. There we go. Altitude, altitude. Thank you. 120. It's, it's pretty slow for us. That's all right. We just need to make it over the edge. We just got to make it over the edge of the end of the carrier. There we go. 108, 7. Oh wow, that was close. That was... That was a little closer than I would have liked. 50... Perfect. Look at that. Repeatable without problem. I'm still not sure exactly what about landing on the carrier is damaging it. But I mean, you know, maybe... Maybe the, uh, the Navy's aircraft carrier it's just too fragile to have the A-10 landing on it. You know, that could be... It's like... <laughs> the damage that's inflicted on the carrier is psychological. <laughs> they can't do that! <gasps> A single A-10 hurts the feelings of even the biggest aircraft carriers. I get it. I understand. Alright, here we go. Oh man, if you haven't checked out the Discord, be sure to do that. A uh, veteran DCS player the other day landed an F-18 on a carrier with seven pounds of fuel remaining. Any DCS, or real pilots for that matter, can appreciate how absolutely out of fuel he was. It was, uh, it was crazy. We had a good time watching that live in the Discord. And we're back off! No problem. Easily doable. Okay. 
and loop back around over here by the carrier. Now, obviously with any type of carrier testing, it's not just gonna be about good days and beautiful weather and that sort of thing. You're gonna also have to consider doing some things with bad weather and trying to land with heavier bomb load. No problem, let's go with uh, bad weather first. Okay, so for our bad weather testing, what we're gonna do is a thunderstorm with the base of clouds at 984 feet with uh, tremendously thick clouds, as, uh, basically as thick as you can. Heavy precipitation being a thunderstorm, we're gonna go with a 25 knot wind that is kind of a quartering left headwind. Uh, fog, of course, I mean, obviously we don't fly in bad weather without there being extensive fog. So uh, the total visibility, even counting the fog, is less than 1500 feet. And, um, yeah, that should do it. Perfect testing. Now with weather this bad, generally, there just wouldn't be any flight operations going on. However, I'd be able to find the ship using TACAN, and I'd be able to shoot an approach using one of several different systems. We're not gonna do that. You can see the carrier, or maybe not, off to my right. That's the sort of visibility we're talking about here. No problem. All right. Yeah, I'm coming in real low on these. I'm still needing to land kind of along the carrier, so what I'm doing is looking for its wake here. I'm going, uh, we're going, uh, Jim Lovell here. You guys remember that story? He was flying F2 Banshees, I think. He was headed out to land at the carrier and had a complete electrical failure. The only way he was able to find the carrier and kind of manage the landing was through the algae and plankton the ship's propellers were kicking up. Oh. I see it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ooh, a little low. A little low, that's all right. Oh. Oh. A little, little too low, I think. <laughs> all right, come on. too long. See, if this actually had a hook on it, that would have been great. That would have been a three wire. And we're off. And little, little wonky. Not gonna get stopped on this one. It really does seem like DCS takes into account the runway conditions, if they're wet or dry. Here we go. Oh. Lose some wheels? No, I think we still got our wheels. 70 knots, 60, brakes, brakes, 50, 50, come on. Ah, damn it. It's got an anchor. Screaming in 50 feet off the deck, no big deal. 120 knots. A little right of center. Wave off, wave off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. I think I might have taken out the Sea Whiz right there, too. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. We're gonna descend. Last I was familiar with all this, they were implementing systems and carriers that were called Magic Carpet. It was gonna kind of help direct you to the carrier even in bad weather and that sort of thing. We're not doing that, so we're just, uh, we're just flying on the ground. Gotta love the lightning here, too. You know, last time I flew in a lightning storm, I got blitzed back to... World War II. Should probably use caution here. Okay, 100 feet off the uh, deck. And 120 knots, no problem. Okay, carrier in sight. And chop and drop. Oh man. We did not miss the conning tower by much there. And we're stopped. Perfect. And looks like everything's still fully functional. Didn't lose any wheels or anything. All right. Now we just gotta get turned around here, no problem. Bring up some of those flaps. I just leave them at 10. There we go. That's what we're gonna need to take back off anyway. Okay, wheel brake. And 
rudder. And here we go. That wind is just a little bit killer, but I mean, you know, you're going to have winds out in the ocean. Okay, replay. This was the view from the carrier. You see the landing light out there. You see it? Here we come. You can hear the wind? That's crazy. Oh man, you know what? That that might have been a three wire. That might have been a three wire. Generally, if you are doing carrier operations, you're aiming for the third of the four wires, or if there are only three wires on a smaller carrier, you're aiming for the second. I think based on where my wheels touched down there, that might have been a that, that might have been a three wire, which is the, the the ideal for most types of aircraft. A little bit further from the end of the carrier than I would like here, but we've got that uh, kind of quartering headwind that should help us with some additional lift over on the left side. Just a little reminder of what we got going on here. Look at that. <laughs> okay, flaps are down. Brakes set, throttles up. Damaging the Vincent's psyche and there we go. There we go. Perfect. That's a pretty aggressive climb rate I came out of there at too. You can see how fast we lost track of the carrier. Okay. So it's all fun and games, bad weather and good weather. Let's try an absolute full load. We are at the absolute maximum weight of the aircraft at this point. You would never ever land like this. This would involve landing with nearly a full tank of fuel, which just doesn't happen. So, in heavy operations, are we able to land it on the carrier? Obviously, if the walrus does get adopted, it'll have some sort of tail hook, so we'll be able to catch one of the arrestor cables. But we're not doing that. Full load coming in. Here we go. Chop and drop. Okay, that would have been a one wire. Not ideal. Come on, brakes. Steering engaged. See if we can get some friction. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh. Oh. <laughs> well, I, uh. I don't know if we're going to be able to turn out of this one. Oh, gosh. There's our load, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I, successful landing. To be clear, successful landing here. Would not be able to turn that around. Uh, just ourselves. We'd have to get pushed back. Okay. Attempt number two. Altitude, altitude. We gotta stay further to one side and hopefully a little bit further back from the front of the carrier. One thirty on short final, man, we're fast. Chop and drop. Oh, oh. We're sliding. We're sliding. Oh, jeez. Wow. All right. Now this, this might be doable. That landing sounded kind of funny. Wheel brake. There we go. Just enough clearance over on the far side. 
Now that landing did not sound right, but it looks like we still got our tires. I don't know what happened. We've lost the green readings on our two main gear. Must have damaged our landing gear somehow on that landing. Slamming into a carrier at absolutely max weight. I mean, they don't look too bad. Maybe bent forward just a little bit more than they would normally be, but. Well, something's wrong with them, but they're still working, so we're going. If you've ever played DCS online, you can find aircraft carriers out here that have, you know, ongoing operations. Multiple real-life players coming and going from these carriers. It's, uh, it's really something. Okay, so I don't know how these landing gear are gonna handle this takeoff. There's, there's something broken about them. The tires are still inflated. I'm guessing I... Broke the hydraulics or something like that on that on that tough landing, but what are you gonna do? Brakes set, throttles up, flaps are good, here we go. Taking off at nearly full weight without the catapult. Can we do it? Oh boy. 80 knots. 90. Come on now. 100. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> All we really need there is the catapult attachment to be added to the nose wheel, and we're all set. Well, I think it's safe to say that these tests were a resounding success. I look forward to the adoption of the A-10 Walrus in the future. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to subscribe for more content like it in the future. And if you want to see me play other types of games, be sure to connect with me on Twitch. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching.